This is the Peugeot 3008 plug-in hybrid SUV and it is by some margin the most expensive car Peugeot sell in Australia. But is it worth the money? Let's find out. The 3008 has been updated for 2022, scoring some new light clusters at the front and back and also a new interior. It's been getting a few looks while I've had it this week and I would have to say it is one of the better looking SUVs on the road. From the side, we can still see a little bit of Range Rover Evoque about this design, especially here on the C-pillar with this black glass section here. And we've got some more black details up the front here as the front fender meets the bonnet. The 19-inch alloys are diamond cut, and I think they look pretty awesome. The rear of the 3008 is not hugely different to the previous model. The light clusters have been updated a little bit to include sequential turn indicators. And under the powered boot lid, which doesn't want to open for me right now. It's beeping a bit. Ah, there we go. Is a 591 litre storage space. You can expand that by a further 1100 litres with the rear seats down. There's no spare tyre in here, but we do get a tyre repair kit. The website says that this car comes with a high speed charging cable, but I can't seem to find one. All we seem to have here is a regular 240 volt wall plug, which would take the better part of forever to charge the battery. The 3008 has scored a new front end as well with new light clusters and I really like this design here where the grille sort of melds into the front bumper here and we get new vertical LED daytime driving lights that bring this car's overall look in line with the 508 sedan. The 3008 plug-in hybrid has not one, but three motors. A 1.6 litre four-cylinder turbocharged petrol that outputs 147 kilowatts of power, mated to two electric motors, one on the front axle and one on the rear. The front generating 81 kilowatts of power and the rear 83. That gives this car a combined power output of 222 kilowatts and 520 newton metres of torque. It really gets along. Zero to 100 in acclaimed 5.9 seconds. I'm a big fan of this car's interior. It was already looking really good in the previous model and Peugeot have managed to up it even further with great contrasting materials. It feels really, really solid and well built, although there are some very large slabs of uh, some plasticky feeling wood throughout the cabin, but it looks good. The center console screen is 10 inches. It has a really nice sharp picture. It runs software that's very similar to the one that we saw in the Citroen C4 last week. Although here it's a little more complicated because this car has a lot more going on. Uh, all sorts of dials about fuel and electricity usage. My son's favorite dial is the one that shows you which engines and which motors are powering the car at any one time and how electricity is flowing from the battery to the electric motors. There's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The picture from the reversing camera and the front camera is a little bit low res though, could be a bit sharper. Climate control is also operated through the touch screen, although there are a row of shortcut piano style buttons down here that allow you quick access to all of those functions. So it's pretty easy to use. We've got a really good size wireless phone charger underneath that with more than enough room for even the biggest phones, a good feel on the gear shifter, another handy compartment here, which is good for your wallet. The drive mode selector, which allows you to choose between four wheel drive, hybrid, electric, and sport. A couple of cup holders and the deepest center console bin you'll find in any car. Hello, hello, hello. hello. And it even has a light in it too. The 12 inch digital instrument cluster in front of the driver is one of my favorites. I really like this design. It's the graphics. There's some really nice 3D maps on there as well. And dial configurations just look really, really good. It is set up quite high though, which means that the steering wheel sits a little bit low. And it is quite a small steering wheel, but I really like the feel of it with a flat top and a flat bottom, which just feels really good when you're cornering. Not a lot of buttons on this steering wheel either, but we do get a couple of paddle shifters here to change gears when the petrol motor is running. The seating position I do find to be a little bit odd though. I feel like I'm quite high in the cabin and this is as low as this seat will go, but I, I really do feel like I'm riding on top of the car as opposed to actually being in it. And my hair is just touching the ceiling there. 
probably because of the uh, panoramic sunroof making the uh, roof line sit a little lower than it would normally. But I do have really good visibility out the front, right to the front of the bonnet, which is good. Good uh, rear vision mirror visibility, although the rear window is a little on the small side, but with blind spot visibility, it's pretty good through the rear windows there. Blind spot monitoring on both of the wing mirrors too. The seats themselves though are very comfortable, they're Nappa leather with some very nice quilting on them, there's heating, there's full electric adjustment for the driver, there is some electric adjustment for the front passenger, the driver also gets a number of massage functions which actually feel really good, you can control those through the centre console screen. And the back seat, like the front seat of the Peugeot 3008, is a little bit low on headroom for me, so again touching the ceiling here but I do have a nice view through the panoramic sunroof although that sun is pretty bright today. More Nappa leather with quilted seats and an armrest with a couple of cup holders. There's two USB-C outputs down the bottom there and a couple of air vents but no separate zone of climate control. It's actually pretty comfortable back here. Uh, knee room wise just touching the seat in front but that's not too bad in my own seating position. I'm 190 centimeters tall so that's that's all right. There's a reasonable amount of tow room, so I could imagine doing a medium-sized road trip here in the back of the Peugeot 3008. Now, I would like to show you just how quietly this car runs in full electric mode, but the electricity has long since run out. In fact, it ran flat on the very first day I got this car. It only had 40 kilometres of range when I picked it up. So at the moment, having just turned the car on after it had been off for a couple of hours, the engine is revving a little loudly because it is providing some extra charge to the battery, but it runs like a normal hybrid. So it only gets a certain amount of charge from deceleration and from the engine. For the car to run on full electric mode, you really do need to plug it in for at least five hours every day. So that has to become like a regular overnight thing. But even with the petrol motor running, it is still very quiet and very refined in here. I mean, this is really luxury car territory. The steering is maybe just a little bit on the light side. There's just perhaps a little bit too much electric assistance. A bit more road feel could be good. Peugeot have done a really, really good job in keeping the transition between electric and petrol powered motors completely seamless. And if it wasn't for the graphic on the screen showing you which one was running, you probably wouldn't know. So with the push of a button here, I can easily switch to the electric flow mode and see exactly what it is that's powering us along at the moment. And we're cruising along the freeway at 80. The petrol motor has shut down. No, it's just come back on. It does that. It comes on and off seemingly at random, depending on the conditions, of course. And now it is driving power through the front wheels and also sending a bit of extra charge to the battery. But if we just coast along here for a moment, I take my foot off the accelerator. Well, it's showing that absolutely nothing is running at the moment. We're just cruising. Ah, now the rear electric motor has kicked in and it's driving power through the rear wheels. So it's constantly shifting between those drive modes and really when you're driving along you're not going to know unless you're looking at the graphic as to what is powering the car at any given moment. It's a pretty cool system. So I think ultimately a plug-in hybrid really is for daily commuting when you can plug the car in every day. So if you've got a wall charger at home this is the perfect car for that because if you're driving, in this case, 40 kilometres a day or less to and from work, dropping the kids at school, doing some shopping, you're going to be fine running this car off electricity all the time. And the average fuel consumption when you do that is just 1.5 litres per 100 kilometres, which is incredible. But if you can't charge the battery every day, then this car just runs as a regular hybrid and fuel consumption goes up. Not hugely, I've been averaging around about four and a half litres per 100 kilometres, but it's still not as good as it could be. And in this car's case, you're paying a fair bit extra for a feature that you're not really using properly. Oh yeah, okay, so taking off with the lights then, you put your foot down and it starts moving off using the electric motor, not a lot happens, and then suddenly the petrol motor kicks in and we start lurching forward. That's just a little thing you have to get used to with this car. 
There's no doubt about it, the Peugeot 3008 plug-in hybrid is one of the nicest SUVs on the road, and in that regard it does its job really, really well. But what does count against it is its limited electric range, which doesn't really make it suitable for touring. But perhaps the biggest thing to count against it is the eye-watering price. Are you ready? Yeah. For that kind of money, you could get yourself into a Range Rover Evoque or even go full electric and get a top spec Polestar 2. You'd still have money left over. If Peugeot knocked about $20,000 off the price, they could do really well with this car, but I think as it stands, you probably won't be holding your breath waiting for one of these to drive past anytime soon.